Okay, you guys, I'm back. So sorry. If I don't, I, I forgot to put my, I use my phone to, to uh, record. If I don't put my phone on airplane mode, a stupid commercial will go right across and then turn off my phone. I, 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 it frustrates me to no flipping end. Okay. Which, I think I found some editing software. I keep talking about that. I've been talking about it forever. But I'm trying to find editing software that I actually understand. Because when that happens, I would like to be able to splice together a few videos, you know. I don't want anything major with my editing. But I think I found one that um, seems simple. I just have to be able now to get my videos from my phone to the computer. And um, so anyway... That's also a chore. But anyway, until then, you guys, whenever my videos just go off, just go to part two. And I'll try to put it in the title. Continue to part two. So you can expect a cutoff. <laughs> oh, nothing frustrates me worse. I'm just like, oh! And I keep a mirror beside me because people always ask that, like, why do you have that mirror? I keep a mirror beside me because I don't have that, um, you know how some phones, or at least cameras, have that uh, little thing that goes like that so you can look in a side screen to see if, you know, if you're in focus or if your camera's still on. I don't have that. So that's why I keep, someone told me, but we'll just have a mirror there so you can always be checking. I'm like, oh, okay. So thank God I have the mirror so I can always check and make sure that my camera didn't get turned off. All right, let's go to these other. We're going to work these other two these other two uh, bubbles together right here and right there. Okay. Oh, I didn't even mention that. Okay, what I what I like to do is I um what I like to do is um, I glue everything down with um, a Mod Podge, a homemade matte Mod Podge, which is nothing but Elmer's glue and a tub about this big, okay? And I put about 10 squirts of a matte acrylic clear spray paint. This is Treehouse 599 Hobby Lobby, okay? And I stick, I do about 10 squirts into just regular um, children's glue, Elmer's. And mix that up. Maybe add a little water to thin it out. And then that way, um, also, that it makes it a uh, matte surface so that you can use paint on top of it. It, remo it, it removes that uh, glossy surface and makes it matte, like a matte medium. It's a very cheap way to make matte medium. Also, I usually take a little bit of this and spray all over this. So everything is really super matte so I can put paint right on top of all this. So, just to let you know, to make sure this is a paintable surface. Sorry about that, that I didn't let you guys know about that. If you want to do this type of work, want to create your own little fairy world. I call them little fairy worlds. Fantasy land fairies. And this is the other thing about doing this type of work. You don't have to create fantasy. Well, they're all going to be fantasy because look what we're doing. But they don't have to be like little fairy worlds. If you like space, do space. If you like... Um, just more like um, nature, do nature, uh, whatever your style is. And as you look through magazines, you may be like, well, what's my style? Well, as you look through magazines and calendars for things, you'll start ripping things out. And what you rip out will tell you what kind of style you like. So. And I like to do some, type, some things that look like it's in space. I think that can look really cool too. And create like nebulas and galaxies and all that. I like that too. I do more of these little fantasy like little fairy worlds. But I do like that. And I've missed doing these. I haven't been doing these little collage fairy worlds for a while. I'm doing a lot of other mixed media. So what I decided this year what I want to do is I want to do a lot of this and then I want to go ahead and I was selling this type of work like the one I should like the ones I showed you that are framed in my shop and also on my um 
Instagram. So I do want to do that. But in between, like I want to do one of these because these are very, they take a lot of work. And after I do this, then I want to do some other mixed media. I have a couple other different types of mixed media. And then I'll go back to this. So you'll see me keep coming back to this, but I'll take a little break, do um, two other types of mixed media that I want to do, and then we'll do one of these. So I, that's a, so I don't, you know, get myself burnt out. And also so I don't bore you guys because, you know, people will be like, okay, you're just doing the same thing over and over and over. I don't want to bore myself and I don't want to bore you guys either. So. Because once you bore yourself and your audience, you know, um, people don't want to watch. But then also you just burn out yourself. So. So I think doing a lot of this, but mixing it in and doing other mixed media projects will just keep everything fresh all the way around. Okay. All right, that looks good. So now we have all of our bubbles situate it and I'm gonna leave all my paints right here on the side except for some of this white that I don't need here but the other white I'll leave because we will be coming back to all these colors over and over again let me just wipe off what I don't need That's simple just take a wet baby wipe or a dry paper towel if it gets too dry just take a wet, wet baby wipe and just wipe it down all right let me see what you guys are seeing so far awesome okay and then i want to take a brush like a fine when i do this type of work this is one of my favorite brushes this real fine um liner brush and i'm gonna take some white paint here And I just want to kind of just encircle a little bit um, just to kind of form my bubbles a little bit more. Also to add a little bit more white back in in certain areas. Are you guys seeing that? Let me come in just a little bit more. There we go. Like right here, I'm just going to bring a little bit more white right in, like into the bubble there. And also I'm just going to define it a little bit more. But kind of do it, it's weird, kind of do it in a messy way. Don't, it doesn't have to be, you don't want it to be perfect. Like that. So thick and thin lines, that's what I'm trying to say. I know somebody's like, girl, what are you trying to say? Your lines don't have to be perfect. They can. You want the circle to be perfect, but the line that you put around it can be kind of thick and thin. And then there could just be no line there at all. It's probably easier just how I'm showing you than explaining it. Because some people out there are like, girl, what are you talking about? This thick and thin line going around is just giving me a little bit more form to the bubble. Okay. Okay. That looks good. All right. Then I like to take um, a really stiff brush. Well, first let's dry this. We're gonna dry this really quick. And I'm gonna take a stiff paint brush. You can do this with a stiff paint brush. You can do this with um, a fan brush probably. But I love this stiff brush. It works really good with this. I'm just trying to say, I have a little bit bigger one, but I think, you know what? I think the smaller one's gonna be better for today anyway. Okay, let me wet that a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and dry this. And if you don't want to hear my blow dryer, just fast forward. 
In fact, I might just go ahead, oops, and pause this so you guys don't have to listen to that. So let me pause this and we'll be right back. Okay, you guys, so our bubbles are all dry. Okay, so let's add some swish, some little swishies in there. By adding the swishies with my stiff brush, or you, like I said, you can use, you can use probably any paintbrush, just find one that's gonna do the swishing. We'll show, you'll understand when I do it. Some of the terminology I use, good grief. Okay, you guys are like, girl, please, with the terminology. All right, so let's put, so what you wanna do is you just wanna do a little swish like that and a little swish here, okay? And this just gives that like, that effect, that water effect. That's kind of too heavy right there. Okay, I kind of just, <laughs> wiped it a little and that worked out good okay so I'm just doing a little bit of swoosh in here like that oops helping And then when we're done, I'll try to come up a little bit closer on this so you can see. Okay, I think that looks good. So see the little swoosh on there? It just adds that little bit to the bubbles. Okay. Now we're going to add some real magic to these. And um, I am going to... Oh, before we do that, let's make some clouds. So with that same stiff brush, we are going to... Oh, did I use the small one or the big one? Okay, I used the small one. Okay, perfect. With that same type of a stiffer brush, I'm going to um, do some clouds. All right. So we're just gonna go like this. There we go. And you can also do a little bit of a cloud like this and then go like that. Well, it actually didn't work. So let's just do a puffy cloud. You can just go like this and make it a puffy cloud. Also, you can just go down like that and create rain from that cloud. Make sure you guys are seeing that. Did you see that? Oh, it's kind of off a little bit. Okay, I'll do another one of those. Well, what I'll, I'll kind of show you what I did. All right, so what I did is I just took my brush and just stippled it like that. And then from there, I just went down and it made it like a little bit of rain. Okay. And let's put another little cloud over here. And I'm going right over the bird. And See if we want another one of those kind of clouds that was just did over here. Yeah, perfect. And then a little bit of rain. We'll just kind of bring a little bit down. You can't even really see it because it's too light, the background. But there we go. Perfect little cloud over the bird. Okay, so there's some clouds. Now, what I want to do is I want to make some like little stars in on top of here, like little splatters, which are going to represent as stars. So we need to add a little bit of water to this white. Oh, 
which is perfect because I just had the right amount left to do these splatters. Okay, make sure you guys are what you guys are seeing. There we go. This also, it looks like little stars. Also, it looks like um, small little bubbles too, over the um, over the um, the larger bubbles. And it really, to me, adding the stars or the little bubbles just really add the magic. And while we're doing this, I know I'm going to want these these little stars all over the whole thing. So let's just go ahead and do that right now. Let's see if I need to go. Oh. This second, you guys, I, I got to rearrange things a little bit. There we go. And let's come back. Let's come back all the way back out. There we go. Let's just take that and put these um, splatters everywhere. So some places it'll look like snow. Some places it'll look it'll represent stars. Some places it'll represent little bubbles, as you see when we as we go along. So we want this all over the place. I already know that. Okay. Very good. We put that down and let me just really quickly just go ahead and take a dry paper towel and wipe that off see how pretty that makes it look let me just come in a little bit so you guys can see I mean look how much we've gotten done in such a short period of time See how pretty it, does, it makes it look? Just adds like such magic. Okay, anyway, let me come back down so we can work on some more stuff here. Okay, so what do we want to work? Oh, so next I want to put in some shooting stars and I'm gonna do that. Coming a little closer. Get some more white paint on here. We're going to do some medium-sized stars and some shooting stars. Because remember I said in the sky, all those splatters represented, um, they also represented bubbles, but they represented stars. So let's put some medium-sized stars in here. Okay. So it's just three flick outs. Okay. Make sure you guys are up close enough and seeing that. Perfect. All right, so we got a few of the medium sized stars. Now we're going to put some shooting stars in. Okay, so a shooting star, you're just going to put like a little bit of a dot down or find a dot, a bigger dot, and then just shoot it out. All this is with this small, um, what do you call this? This really thin brush, liner brush. I got lucky and I um, found a bunch of liner brushes. Um, these were at Hobby Lobby and they were, um, you get a pack of like five or six of them for like, I think they're like five or six dollars and I used a coupon. Plus, what I love about them is look how beautiful they are. They're um, like little mermaid brushes. So look for these in the craft section, not the fine art section, but the craft section at Hobby Lobby. Hopefully they still have them. I saw somebody got them on clearance, so they might be clearancing them out now. But I bought like tons of them. I just kept using my coupon every time I went, I would buy a pack. And now I have like, oh my God, a lot. <laughs> Because I was afraid they're going to stop making these. And I think they did. Okay, so we got some nice shooting stars in here. 
I love that. Um, let me see if I want to put any shooting stars. No, let's put a couple of um, stars on our bird. So we're like our bird, our hummingbird is really like a part of the sky. And we'll throw a couple shooting stars on the bird. On the hummingbird. Hummingbirds have to be my favorite bird. I just love them. There we go. So that looks really good. Okay. And now the next thing I want to do is I want to just show you a little technique to put some little birds in your work in this sky. Just a second. I do want to say at Walmart, um, oh, and you use acrylic paint for all of this. Just cheap acrylic paints. The cheaper the better because the cheap acrylic paints are really, really flat. So that's what you really want. Just cheap old craft paint. These are apple barrels that you get at um, Walmart. And they're usually 50 cents if you get the smaller ones like that. But these ones are like three bucks. But I get um, the, this size of apple barrel in black and white. The eight ounce because I use it so much so that way I don't have to run out all right so we have a little bit of black Let we look at our time situation okay with that liner brush still we're just gonna just do you just do like a little V and that makes little birds you can throw some little birds in the clouds you can also throw some of these birds in the bubble. So they're flying in the bubble or out of the bubble. Like that. <clears throat> Another uh, bird I like to do is, um, oh, let me think if I can remember how to do it. Okay, like this. There we go. Just a little bit bigger one. So I'll put another one here. You put a line down and then you just kind of just throw the wings on there. It's just a larger bird. Do a couple of those here and there. Okay. We'll throw a little bit of birds over here. Okay. And you know what? Let's throw a couple of birds on the hummingbird. Isn't that kind of cool? Hummingbirds on birds on the hummingbird. I think that's cool. Okay. Oh, you know what? We can throw some stuff down here too while we're at it. Um, we'll put some birds here. We'll put some larger ones. And we'll throw some down here. Okay. I think that looks really good. Let's go back to, um, hopefully you guys are seeing this. Yeah. Let's go back to the, um, right down in the center there. We'll go back to the white for a second. And let's throw some, um, if they show up, yeah. It's kind of lighter down here, but let's throw some um, of the shooting stars into this. And also we'll throw a few little of the medium size shooting stars in here. Just to bring all this down. Okay. All right, that looks good. All right. Let's look at our time situation. Okay, we got about six minutes before this is over, before this session is over. And 
I'm going to show you how we're going to do some water. See this um, whole like little uh, castle here? I always try to um, get castles in magazines. When I see a castle, I rip it right out. At least a small enough castle so I know I can put it in my work because I love castles. Okay, so we're going to take that same liner brush and we're going to add some water. Just like this. Okay. Also, let me make sure that building is in there. Yeah. Let's add that here. Oh, I don't know if I like it like that. Well, yeah, I do. That's the line of the building. Okay, so we're going to follow the line of this building. And we're going to throw in... Um, some water or it, it could be water or snow here we'll make it kind of snow and how I decided I do the same technique for water or for snow I just make it a little bit thinner or thicker so this will be snow and you're like what it's just gonna snow right in the middle of that whole thing yep it's your little fantasy world you can have over here it can be snowy somewhere else it can be rainy over somewhere else it could be sunny it's your own little fantasy world so you can do what you want to do there's a little window right there so I'm just gonna have some snow coming off of that I think I rubbed my hands on that Sorry if I'm getting a little quiet, you guys. I'm just focusing. And there's another little area here. Make sure you guys are seeing it right there. Little areas like this, little that we can add a little bit of snow. Okay. And when you add um, your line first, like how I draw a line across, you can make the line not very, don't make it very perfect, thick and thin. Also, don't make all your water, whether it's water or whether it's snow, don't make them all the same, like have this one drizzle longer and that one shorter. In your unrealistic world, it makes it look more realistic. <laughs> I know that's an <coughs> oxymoron, but... As you keep doing this type of work, you'll understand what I'm saying. <laughs> You're like, girl, what are you talking about? You're like, this is not even a real world. <laughs> There's a little roof over here. And I'm going to load up a lot of paint on the top of this. And then I'm going to take my finger and go like that. That's another way to create, like, water coming off of something. Right there. Did you guys see me do that? No, you didn't, because it was off camera. Darn it. Okay, I'm going to erase it and let you guys see it. I want you guys to see that, because that technique is really cool. Make sure you guys are seeing my finger. No. Gosh. It's right there. Okay. So there's like a little roof right here. So I'm going to put a lot of paint on the top of this roof, kind of load it up a lot. And then take your finger and just go down. And it, um, let me do it again. Cool. We'll do it one more time. Just, cool. There we go. And it just makes it look like there's a lot of water coming off of here. Perfect. See that? It's right there. Perfect. All right, we're, we're up so close on this whole thing. That's why I, it was hard for me to line it up for you guys to see that. Okay, let's come. Oh, look how cool that looks. So that's all on the castle. 
we did snow and we did water all on that castle and I think that looks really cool okay you guys that's it for this session because um, after about 30 minutes my camera turns off or it doesn't turn off it just starts a new video so we're done with this session um you guys go to part three after this we have part one we have part two go to part three and we will hit more areas and creating this whole world okay so i'll see you guys in part three bye